Welcome, my beautiful Pisces. Um, this is going to be your September 2024 reading. Um, I'm doing things just a little different this month. Instead of like going in order like I normally do, I start with the birthday month and then go forward. I decided to do um, like I already did Virgo. So I decided what I want to do is do the opposite sign next. And I am looking for synchronicities. Remember, your opposite sign can certainly support you, um, you know, help you. Well, how do I want to say this? Like, I feel like what Virgo lacks and Pisces being our opposite sign, I am a Virgo, um, we can learn from and vice versa. So just a little experiment. We'll see how it goes, but I am going to look for synchronicities. I'm going to use the same decks, um, though, of course, they're all pre-shuffled. Uh, this, by the way, this is going to be for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, those intuitively guided. Thank you for paying attention to your intuition. Um, if you're in love with the Pisces, you know, platonically, romantically, just know that your spirit guides, who I read through, our spirit guides, um, that they know you're here. So you'll definitely, you know, definitely have messages for you. And don't be afraid to ask your spirit guides to give you signs of confirmation, you know, whether it be through, you know, anything, really, a name, a number, um, a color, just something random. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like, you know, most of the time they're going to let you know that can be through goosebumps. You're just going to know. Um, so anyways, we are also bringing back for September, the Major Arcana deck. Um, this is a deck that I believe that I just separated. I don't know where the rest of the deck went, so I'm not sure if it was me who separated or they came this way. Um, but we're going to use this this deck for like bullet, po bullet points in your reading. Um, we're going to start with this deck and Mother Mary, and then we'll get into the regular spread. Um, so again, these are major arcanas. I'm just looking for bullet points for your reading. Um, I find, I just love bringing them in the reading. I don't know why I don't do it more often, but we're, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to start with them, Mother Mary. Actually, we're going to start with Mother Mary for her beautiful words of wisdom. We're going to use the Gilded Tarot to clarify or go deeper. Um, you know, my readings are usually long, and um, it's just the way it is. It's how I, you know, it's how I feel guided to read. So, you know, if you're not into a long reading, though virtue, patience is a virtue, but to each of their own at the same time, um, then this just may not be your reading. However, I would say, you know, if you felt called to the reading, but then you don't really have the patience to listen to the whole reading, I feel like the end of the reading, you know, it always blows my mind. And I've been reading Tarot forever. Um, and this is why I love it so much, because I feel like I feel like I'm telling a story um, every day, you know, for each sign. Like it's like a movie to me. And um, I love movies. So that might be why I love doing tarot. I'm also a Virgo who I call psychic detective. So I am your psychic detective. I want to dig deep, find your real answers, real solutions. Uh, but anyway, so we're going to use the universal tarot for your main spread. So let's just slide them over for right now. And let's start with Mother Mary. I've been taking Mother Mary after the reading. Um, but for this month... We're going to take him before the reading. We're going to, um, get her words of wisdom before the reading. Let's give him a cut and let's officially open this reading. Now, when I say that, I feel like as soon as I hit start, the reading has opened. All right. My beautiful Pisces. And those intuitively guided Mother Mary's words of wisdom for you. September 2024. 
that I remember I'm as fluid, especially in the spirit world. So to me, that just means the reading will find you. You'll find it in its divine timing. All right, we have caring. Well, interesting, because I do believe Virgo also got that caring. Heaven cares for me, and I, and I keep my heart open to caring about myself, others, and the world. Caring. We'll read this from the book at the end of the reading. But this is about keeping your heart open for yourself, for others, and the world. And boy, does the world need it right now. All right, so we're going to put that right over there. I'm going to go ahead and bring the lid down. And let's put this away. All right, so now we're going to bring in the major arcanas. I'm going to give them a little shuffle, a little hard to shuffle because there's not that many. But let's go ahead and do it anyway. Let's give them a cut. reason why I do this, I cut my cards um, before reading, is to me it's a symbol to our guides that I am open, I am ready. So, I am open and I am ready. Let's begin. I'm not really reading them as signs, just so you know. Temperance, well hello divine timing. You know, it's funny how I just said patience is a virtue. Well, that's what Mother Mary's, that's really one of her lessons, or Mother Mary, that's what Temperance is. Um, one of her lessons is, you know, learning how to be patient. All good things come in divine timing. I often feel, honestly, Temperance is really the one who is making sure, let's just say soulmates, that their cups are equally filled. Um... Hmm, interesting. Interesting. And she literally, you can see, like, she's literally mixing, like, the love between these two cups. Now, it doesn't have to talk about love, but it is talking about divine timing. We have the emperor. This is your neighbor. Um... You know, this is someone, when, when I see the emperor or the empress, I feel like this is someone who's lived a lot of life. And I don't mean age-wise. I mean, like, they, they've gone through a lot of experiences. I feel like they, um, you know, the emperor is someone that, in the upright, we can look up to. This is, this is someone who does care about their fellow man, their fellow woman. Um... This is someone who's methodical, puts plans in place. And, you know, Temperance is a card of Sagittarius. The Emperor is a card of Aries. Though, again, I kind of kind of want you to forget the signs and just think about the energy. So, for some of you, there may be something, some type of plan that, you know, it's almost like you've been doing the legwork. But maybe now it's like time, like divine timing has now reached you. All right. And then we have the chariot. So unlimited potential. Card of Cancer. You know, what I want you to remember about the chariot is the chariot is driven by our intentions. We tell the chariot where to go through our intentions. And if we have positive intentions, you know, if we're really believing in ourselves, even if we don't even know, like, 100%, like, how am I going to pull this off type of energy, but yet you believe that you can, then I feel like you will. You know, I'm noticing the beautiful rainbow behind him. So the chariot, the emperor, and temperance. All right, let's set them aside. Um, so I feel like chances are some of you have been waiting for something. And, you know, this can, t like, like part of me feels like it's love. 
But I also feel like for some of you, it's talking about like a plan that maybe you, you know, that you put in place and it may be just the right time now. And if you question, like, even if it's about love, you know, can this be successful? Think of your intentions, because again, the chariot represents unlimited potential. You know, our human mind is what puts the limits upon it. Our spiritual being knows that we really do have this unlimited potential. And temperance really, um, you know, the controller of divine timing. So, so, And my light just blinked. That was weird. Not weird. It happens all the time. Um, and it's not my light bulb. I just know, you know, I just, I just know it's our guides. Okay. You know, it's interesting because the emperor looking right back at temperance, like when is the timing? When's, when is the time to do this? When is the time for me to bring, you know, my hard work or a new plan um, or even a soulmate when when temperance is saying soon soon in the chariot again to me that's movement so i have a feeling divine timing has reached us all right let's bring in the universal trout give it a couple shuffles Let's go ahead and give him a cut. Introduce him into the reading. Actually, let's move them up. Give ourselves plenty of room. And let's begin. Okay, wow. All right, Seven of Cups. Seven of Cups opens up this part of the reading. Hello, Ten of Cups. House of Love, House of Harmony. King of Cups. Hmm. This is the king I would look for as it relates to love. Can be a Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces, but... In my table, it does certainly does not have to be. You know, this look at that. My light just my light just flickered again. Almost like in in agreeance of what I said. Um, anyways, this king, you know, first of all, he's holding his cup, but he looks like he's about like he's ready to get out of his chair. Maybe he's been patiently waiting and like he feels that divine timing. Yeah, it's the right time. Hello, chariot. Again, coming under the chariot, by the way. Seven of swords. Wah, wah. Seven of swords coming under the seven of cups. Okay, and we are going to come back and talk about all this and look at this again, temperance, under that ten of cups now. So she's really sitting above the ten of cups, and now below the Ten of Cups, it's almost like your, your, your divine team is saying, we've got you covered. As above, so below. It's exactly how she's falling. Above and below. With the Ten of Cups in between. This King of Cups, like, ready to get out of his seat. Like, I'm ready to step into action. The Chariot is like the vehicle. Right, the vehicle that's going to um let's just say determine how far how far I'm willing to take this. Now, the chariot is mirroring the seven of cups. And I feel like that's where patience comes in. Um, you know, some of these cups may be reaching you already, 
but there could be some uncertainty. That's really what the Seven of Cups speaks about, like uncertainty in whether to accept, let's say, some of these cups coming your way. Um, and, and the Seven of Swords underneath it tells me why, like why I might be a little confused or leery of accepting Maybe this king's cup. And when I say king, king, you know, male or female, because we have both females and males here. Um, so, and that's another reason why I kind of don't even think about the signs. But anyway, Seven of Swords does talk about untrustworthy energy. Um, this is the thief in the night. That's what, it, that's what it's called. This is someone who takes more than they need. Uh, definitely of lower vibrational energy. This is someone who thinks about themselves first. And I mean that in an egotistical way. Like there's nothing wrong with putting yourself first. But this person puts themselves first. And, you know, as in like, like I take more than I deserve. I take more than is mine to take. Some of you, you could have certainly dealt with someone who was untrustworthy in your past. And I feel like with the Seven of Cups right above it, that would tell you or at least give you a clue that potentially this energy could still have somewhat of an effect on your decision making. Because everything else looks quite beautiful. You know, but I feel like the Seven of Cups is saying the ball's in your court. It's going to be your decision. You know, can I trust this cup or not? Well, first of all, I feel like if you dealt with this type of energy, I feel like you learn, especially if you've left it. Um, let's say it's like a narcissistic type energy. I feel like you learn then how to read people. Like if a narcissist came towards you again, he'd be able to pick it up. Especially with temperance here. You know, I feel like divine timing wouldn't happen if this is about, like, you know, someone of a lower vibrational energy. No, that may be where the patience was required. Maybe I had to be honest with myself. Look at this person. Understand that, you know, their vibration is just lower. You know, and I feel like these type of people... I feel like it's almost like they demand that we lower our vibration to be in their life, whether it be love, whether it be work, whether it be family. And I feel like part of our our soul's lesson, let's say, is learning how not to lower our own vibration. You know, and and don't regret and and definitely forgive. Forgive yourself, like you know, like I've been, I've been with someone like this, and um, I had to forgive myself. Like, what was I thinking? But then, you know, these type of people can be very charming when you first meet them. They certainly don't come out and say, "Hey, I'm a narcissist. Hey, I'm going to take more from you than you know than I'm going to give to you." So. Long story short, I feel like it's just saying that this energy may still have some effect on your decision making, on your trust in, let's just say, what's next. But then temperance. You know, and what does temperance also ask you to do? She asks you to let go of the things that you cannot control. And that is another person many times right? Like we can't control who they are. They are who they are. And many times I feel like the Seven of Swords, they're very comfortable living in that type of energy. You know, to them, there's nothing wrong with them. Well, maybe, you know, it's like, okay, you want to think that, think that, but it's not what I want, right? And temperance, I feel like knows that. Some of you, this is exactly what, you know, divine timing may be talking about. The ability to clear that energy. You know, it's like not allowing 
someone who, let's just say, was untrustworthy anyways. Someone who had no problem lying. You know, probably lie after lie after lie. Not allowing them to really affect our present or future. Okay, you got my past, but I'm not going to allow you to, you know, diminish my potential. Two sevens, by the way. Some of you could have been born in 77. Sevens may mean something. Could be a life past seven. Um, but really, I feel like that's the energy that, again, may still be lingering a little bit. Look at this. We have the emperor again. And the emperor is mirroring the emperor. Coming under the king of cups. Wow. We have the nine of pentacles. Beautiful. Nine of Pentacles. First of all, this is a card of Virgo. So kind of interesting that I'm doing your opposite sign. Um, but this is about, you know, the meaning of the card is successful self-employment. But I don't always feel like it has to be like self-employment. I feel like really what it is, is where I'm really learning to stand on my own two feet. This is when I really have an independent nature. I don't need someone else to take care of me. I can take care of myself. Doesn't mean I won't welcome, you know, someone who, you know, can enhance my life. You know, I'm not against like being with someone, but I'm not the same person I was back here. Some of you, this is a clue that, you know, if you're thinking of doing something in the world, um, again with the emperor here twice again, you know. First of all, it may say like, you know, maybe you have been putting plans in place and this may be the perfect time. You know, who reaps the benefit of the nine of pentacles? You do. You do. Nobody else. And it's interesting because it is mirroring the seven of swords. Where I have a feeling like in the past they would be, you know, as you make money, their hands would be out. Gimme, gimme, gimme. But now I feel like I feel like you must have evolved from this energy or you are evolving from this energy, because in this energy, I feel like you'd be saying, no, no, no. Make your own money. Get your own life together. So I really love this energy because it, re it it's like an independent nature. It's like when I'm feeling I'm feeling good. Um. And again, you are the you are the benefactor of, you know, your hard work. But in the Nine of Pentacles, I feel like, but I love what I do at the same time. Some of you may be here and that may be your question, like, can I or will I be successful in bringing something to the world Um that maybe I've been thinking about for a while. Well, this would answer your question. And then sitting right next to the emperor. So I do feel like for many, it's talking about, you know, um, your business. Your business. And then, well, hello, soulmates. Look at that. So we opened this reading with me talking about temperance, really making sure that both cups of the soulmates are equally filled. And here they are now. Now, it's coming under that seven of swords. So for some of you, I do feel like it's talking about love. I do not feel like this seven of swords person was a soulmate. Could have been karmic. Um, probably just a lesson, right? And, and the lesson probably is just like how to reclaim yourself, your power. You know, knowing like, okay, I've been giving it away, giving it away, giving it away. But I feel like not anymore. It definitely makes me feel like one of these cups that are coming in through the seven of cups is a soulmate. 
because it is mirroring the chariot. And this king of cups, he's like getting ready to, you know, I feel like he's getting ready to like introduce himself into your life, so to speak. And he's sitting right next to the ten of cups. I mean, I love this line, even though the seven of cups can, you know, sometimes it can mean trying to make a decision in chaotic energy. And what you have to do is just kind of separate the chaos and your mind, your heart. It's almost like the lovers, a heart overhead decision, a head over heart decision. I feel like the Seven of Swords must have been um, older energy because I feel like at this point, like, I don't feel worried. I don't feel worried that that this is, you know, that, that this is making a return appearance. Now, let's just say, you know, sometimes these type of people, like narcissistic type of people, as soon as you, like, find your way, become happy, they can make a repeat appearance. You know, they don't want you happy. But everything has you standing your ground. Everything has you becoming stronger and stronger, um, more independent. And really, I feel like liking it that way. I don't feel like you're shutting your heart down. You know, you may be leery of open, you know, of accepting love. But I don't feel like you've completely shut your heart down. And if you did, then temperance would be like, okay, well, it's not divine timing yet. But the soulmates is showing. So, feels like the right time to me. All right, bring us up just a little bit more. You know, the Virgo in me likes, kind of like the Emperor, I like it nice and neat. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, they're all reversed. I have a feeling my whole deck's are reversed now. Oh, look at that, the full. So the full is going to be what's on the bottom of the deck, so we'll bring him out for the time being. Look at this. This is the marriage card. Now, mirroring Empress, the Ten of Cups, Empress again, and now the marriage card sitting right next to the soulmates. Wow. You know, this is my favorite love card because this is about making true commitments. Commitments that can really last a lifetime and beyond. You know, again, soulmate energy, you probably loved in other lifetimes and you'll probably love in future lifetimes. You know, a lot of people don't like when I say this. I shouldn't say a lot of people, but some people don't like when I say that I do feel like sometimes our soul is able to plant certain seeds of intention before we even come into this earth. And it feels like this is one of them, like a soulmate. So sometimes a soulmate doesn't come into our life until we've learned some valuable lessons, because we're not just here for love. We're here to learn, right? We're here to grow. And that's exactly what feels like it's happening for you. You're learning, you're growing. Um, you're understanding vibration, you know, lower vibration, high vibration. Everyone in the four of wands, they want to be there. They want to make this commitment. And how much do I love the temperance is right above them. And the Ten of Cups, by the way. I love it a lot. And coming right next to the soulmates. The strength card. So, strength card, first of all, number eight. Eights, to me, speak about a new beginning. Um... Also, the number of infinity. 
But this is about looking within. You know, this is understanding like those things or those people they've been tempted to. Why? Understanding that, you know, was, you know, was I willing to lower my vibration to be with someone? But yet, even in that energy, they were untrustworthy. This is the ability to overcome that. You know, a lot of times you'll see in this image like a male or a female who's, you know, part human, part lion. And what to me it symbolizes is the power. By the way, look at the number of infinity right there. Not the first time we said that, right? As above, so below. No beginning, no end. I feel like the but what we want to learn is... That, again, even if our souls, even if the two of you have already planted those seeds, right, to come together, and probably at a certain time, you know, it makes sense with the Nine of Pentacles here, because there's there it's more than just loving each other. It's about your experience, like the experiences that you had that allowed you to grow that allowed you to be in this in this independent nature. I definitely feel like some of you created your own businesses. And part of why you may be here is like, will I be successful? Listen, it, you definitely have to put the work in. But if you do, I feel like the answer is yes, all day long. So this is really a sense of power. And then we have the King of Wands. King of Wands. King of Action. Let me tell you what I think about this king. This is someone who puts actions behind their words. He looks like he's getting ready to get out of his chair too. You know, for some of you, this is, this is talking about different people for you. But let's say it's the same person. Um, first of all, the King of Cups tells me when I see the King of Cups, I think of someone who really enjoys being in a relationship, really enjoys having that special person beside them, you know, to grow a life together. And it is a king, so not a page. So maybe, you know, uh, you know, I don't want to look back and be like, why did it take so long? Um, you know, I want to look back and just look at, at myself and, and see how much I have grown. And boy, it looks like you've grown a lot. So again, someone who puts actions behind their words, it's mirroring the soulmates, two chariots, you know, it's funny because I called Virgo's reading synchronized dancing because they also had very, um, what's the word I want to use, um, had a lot of synchronicities in their reading. You know, I could definitely feel that I was reading for like in a soulmate energy, both of the soulmates. Hmm. And then we have the full on the bottom of the deck. Well, my dear, that's all about a new beginning. It's about taking a leap of faith. You know, and then temperance, talking about divine timing. And maybe that's what it's all been about. When are you ready to take that leap of faith? The full leaves the past in the past. You know, I feel like the knapsack it's just the wisdom that the fool has gained through previous experiences. But no way am I allowing like negative energy, negative people, negative thoughts to predict my present nor my future. I'm going to take a leap of faith. You know, I am creating my own tarot cards. I know I keep saying that, but it's, it is a long process. And my fool shows angels like below the cliff 
So if for chan if by chance this fool would fall, angels will lift them right back up. Why? Because I feel it to be in the fool's energy. It means you have evolved. It means you're not allowing these past people to have a say so in your future. I want to look underneath. Look at that. Five of Wands. Drama. You know, the Five of Wands to me, it is a lot of drama. It's a lot of fighting. Um, there's usually no change within that, even though five is asking for change. And I feel like sometimes the only way that change can happen is by me leaving it. By me becoming the fool. I often feel in this energy if I'm like waiting for someone to apologize, say they were wrong. I don't feel like it comes. I don't feel like you get that. But here's the thing, I don't feel like you really need that. Because again, lower vibrational energy. What do I care? You know, I get it, like you do care. But in the long run, I feel like this is energy that's being eclipsed out of your life if you allow it. So if I'm waiting for someone to like apologize, the fool's like, you don't need it. This is about a new beginning, you know, a higher vibration in, I feel like, all areas of your life. You know, I, I definitely feel like the fool wouldn't allow lower vibrational, uh, well, it's not the fool won't come across lower vibrational energy. It's just the fool now knows the difference. I feel like that's what a lot of us have been learning. It's a new beginning. The timing is right. Who's ever entering our lives and us them, you know, it may talk about like both because again, I feel like the emperor is someone who has probably gone through the dark night of the soul. And that's why the emperor becomes such a great teacher. I've had those experiences and I want to help others in some form. Definitely great energy for those who are thinking of doing, you know, starting a business. Or let's say you've already started a business, but you really haven't seen the fruits of your labor yet. Well, the nine of pentacles says you will soon. Soon. And I feel like temperance is saying, don't try to control who's ever in that seven of swords energy. Just leave it to me. I'll control them. You know, and that's usually through karma. But again, it's almost like, <clears throat> you know, do we want to give them any more energy or time? Fool's like, no. No, oh. I'm on to what's next, what's new, what's, what is of a higher vibration. You know, I can't help but think someone may be getting down. It's almost like that's what that king is doing, like getting ready to get down on his knee, maybe proposing to someone. Okay, let's go ahead and bring in the Gilded Tarot. Ready to give it a couple of shuffles. Two, four, eight. I don't know why that's standing out to me, but it is. Maybe someone was looking for one of those numbers. All right, we're going to start at the beginning, but we're definitely reading it as a whole. You 
You know, and another thing I want to say, as it relates to love, because this does feel of a much higher vibration than maybe what I've been used to. You know, it's interesting because I just did a reading not too long ago where I literally asked Divine five questions about our soulmate, but really about soulmate union, the timing of it. And it was so clear. I mean, it really is. I, I actually reshared it because it's one of my favorite readings that I've done in a while. Um, and I don't know. This It's just this reading is reminding me of it. So let's keep going. King of Cups again. You know, again, it's like this king is getting ready to get out of his chair. Now this king, first of all, he's connected to divine timing. So at least this king feels it's the right time. You know, and I feel like the question is posed to you. And you're, and you may be like, what do I do? What do I do? Um... Uh, you know, I can't tell you what to do, but I feel like because temperance is so close to this energy, like, I, I really fe feel like there's nothing to fear. And the king right now is also marrying the soulmate's energy. Well, let's keep going. Well, hello, Will Fortune. Hello, Destiny. That's probably why I spoke about two people who planted, or two souls who planted these seeds before they came into this lifetime. And the reason why I say that is, again, you know, there's more than just one thing our soul wants to accomplish in this lifetime. You know, this is our classroom. This is about expanding and evolving our soul. I often feel like, at least this is what I picture in my mind's eye, that when we leave this world, um, we go back and there's and there's like all these young souls that are asking us, what was it like? Tell us your story. Tell us about Earth. And I want to have a good story to tell them. I don't, I don't want to say to them, well, I didn't really do anything because I met this one person who was a narcissist and, you know, I never evolved from that. No. I want to tell them how I have evolved, how they can evolve when it's their time. But this is talking about your destiny. And it's coming over the Ten of Cups. And it's mirroring the Four of Cups. I'm, I'm sorry, the Four of Wands, the marriage card. And temperance, again, is like all around this love. Well, this is why. This is something... That was destined to be. But it was destined to be in divine timing. When, you know, why? So that it could be all that it really has the potential of being. Wow. We have the death card. Card of Scorpio. Death card talks about closing of doors so that a new door can open and a new door always does open. You know, I had someone not, you know, this is not to pick on anyone, but this, but I really listened to your comments and someone had, you know, said that, you know, when they close th these doors and a new door opens, it keeps bringing in the same type of energy. I would advise someone then to look at their own energy. You know what I mean? Like, have I evolved? Do I understand that I'm giving away my power? You know, because, again, the chariot is about your intentions. And think of the law of attraction. The intentions I put out there is what must meet me. You know... The universe isn't like deciphering, did she really mean to put those out? Nope, she put those out. That must be that must be what she wants back. 
So, you know, I feel like it just simply means that I got to think about my own energy. I have to think about where my own vibration is. You know, closing doors, I know it's not easy, but I feel like once we do close that door, once we lift our own vibration, these new doors that open, I feel like they're just divine. This is about a rebirth. You know, mirroring the strength card also, it feels like part of that door that needed to close is, first of all, realizing how you have grown. And it's interesting what I just said, because in the strength card, it really is me having to look within myself. You know, what energy have I been tempted to? Why? Right? Break it down. You can figure it out. You know, if if I just allow these lower vibrational people to dictate my life, well, then they will dictate your life. But if I understand that part of part of these life lessons were and are learning how to evolve from that energy, well, then I can guarantee you the new door that opens just like the full free and clear but it is a rebirth. And by the way, it's connected to two chariots. So, synchronicities again, right? We have the five of pentacles. Interesting. And you know what's interesting? What follows it? The ten of pentacles. The Five of Pentacles, I feel like that's the door that's closing. You know, the Five of Pentacles, it, it can be temporarily difficult energy, for sure. Um, it can even talk about energy, you know, like um, maybe a door closed that I didn't even want to close. But maybe Divine is like, but my dear, it really does need to close. You know, this is something that sometimes can happen against your control, against your own wishes. But what I feel in the Five of Pentacles is where this person is moving to, if they allow themselves, and you can see it in here, I feel like you're moving towards your soulmate family. Those who will get you, understand you. First, I do have to get through this change. You know, Maybe I lost a lot in this energy, or I feel like I've lost a lot. Could be finance, like I lost a job. But look how quickly you recoup it. I feel like this person in Seven of Swords had, for some of you, a part in, like, almost like, again, your money. Take that power away from them. You're recouping so quickly what you feel you have lost. But really what you have lost, I don't feel like it was worth staying anyway. Ten of Pentacles is the house of abundance. By the way, it is mirroring the Nine of Pentacles. Some of you, you're going to just find yourself on this path of doing something in the world that just feels right. You know, like as you step into it, you're, you're going to have this feeling of, you know, I just feel like I was born to do this. I love that you are recouping very quickly what you feel you have lost, but in a hot, much higher vibration. Again, abundance. I, and I also feel like the Ten of Pentacles, to me, stands for a house of loyalty. Well, coming over the Seven of Swords, that there wasn't loyalty in that house. There wasn't trust in that house. But the Ten of Pentacles speaks about you know, a house that truly can take root. 
I feel like will last forever and ever and ever. Hello, Ace of Pentacles, right over Temperance. What a reading, Pisces. So, the Ace of Pentacles means that something is coming into your physical world, and it is in divine timing. It means you're now ready to handle it. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's say this seed comes in, but I'm really still stuck in the past. You know, I'm still allowing the person of the Seven of Swords to have an effect on my life. Well, then I may just let this seed dry up and die. Or they may try to take it. But now, because I feel like you have cleared that energy, left that energy, evolved from that energy, now I feel like this Ace of Pentacles is something that really can grow and enhance your life. That's what it's meant for. You know, to me, it's it's like giving you the way to make some dreams come true. Right under the wheel. Right over temperance. This can talk about a person. It just, it literally means something is coming into your physical world that is tangible. Something you can touch. Maybe someone that you can kiss. But I'm the one who has to nurture this seed. You know, I feel like that's what Temperance has been doing. Like she's been nurturing these soulmates, right? Making sure that each cup is equally filled. That they are on the same vibrational level. And now that the ace comes out, it tells me that you are. Or that you soon will be. And then we have justice. So, you know, coming under the death card. Some of you could have certainly been in a karmic relationship. And this is about cutting those ties. You know, justice can talk about the scales being uneven, right? But really what justice is talking about is finding balance. And I feel like, especially coming under that death card again, closing of a door, I feel like that it rebalances you. We, we have to not be so afraid to cut ties to things that we know aren't serving us. You know, justice's, justice's job is about making you whole again. You whole again. But it does take your action to cut those ties, karmic ties, energetic ties, whatever they may be. It can even represent like a divorce. Though I hate to say that because I know some people are like, you shouldn't suggest divorce. But, you know, again, to each of their own. So, what's fair and just in the world? Some of you... You may be um, thinking now of, like, helping others in what's fair and just in their world. Coming over the emperor. Carter Lieber, by the way, I know, I don't, I don't know if I've been giving you signs or not. Hangman coming over the nine of cups under the five of pentacles. You know, the hangman really is seeking wisdom, you know, is seeking divine wisdom, but on but for this earthly plane. Coming over that nine of pentacles, I feel like some of you have just been like, when is the time? Like, do I feel comfortable in bringing? You know, what I have to offer to the world. And justice seems to be also part of that. You know, part of this may be just learning how to believe in yourself again. Your abilities. Some of you, like, I feel like you may, like, start receiving epiphanies, ideas, and 
um, I feel like the more that you can, especially if they're coming from divine, the more that you pay attention to them, you know, because again, the hangman is seeking wisdom. And I do feel like the hangman will receive that wisdom. But it's like my mind could have been clouded for a little while. And I have to bring that back again to the seven of swords. All right. Two of wands over the two of cups. Hello. It's like fear is now gone. You know, this to me means the willingness to step into something, to step onto the path. And I also feel like sometimes we have to like remember, you know, like maybe we want the answer immediately, like, will this go the whole way? But what we want to remember is we're building it as we go. This is just stepping onto the path. So I feel like the fool is saying yes to this new beginning. We have your major arcana, the moon. So it's tying you directly to the marriage card now. It's tying you directly to destiny. It's tying you directly to this ace of pentacles. That to me, I feel like, you know, I don't feel like it's just love. But I do feel love. And I do feel very high vibrational type of love. Doesn't mean perfect. You know, don't shoot for perfection. That's a Virgo trait. Because we'll never find it. No one's perfect, right? But we can build as we go along. And then, well, hello, star. Your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. You know, I feel like the star, your dreams, this is working hand in hand with divine. This is you putting those dreams and wishes out on the table and then trusting in a divine that they can come true. Not only can they come true, I feel like they will come true. But again, remembering like, you know, as I start to see these signs as certain like thoughts and ideas and people start coming my way, the ability to move in it. Coming over his strength card tells me you're so ready. But maybe I just see that. And maybe I'm just hoping that you can also see that. Let me grab a drink real quick. Um, the star is also a card of Aquarius. You have a lot of major arcanas, I just realized. And that can certainly talk about a lot of changes, but all of them feel good. You know, you have um, the wheel, the death card. Um, justice, the hangman, the star, the moon, look at that, the star and the moon, temperance, twice, the emperor, twice, the chariot, twice. Wow. And it cups. Here it is. You know, it feels like this is saying because destiny is over the ten of cups here. And this may just be like, you know, it may start as a wish, a prayer, a hope. But it's more than that because, again, temperance is making sure that the soulmates are ready for each other. You know, that wheel is starting to move, but it did require that a door be closed. And by, and again, that door that needs to be closed, 
you know, I definitely feel like the day will come you look back and be thank you like be so thankful that you did close that door. And then the Ten of Cups again. Over this King of Wands. So let me say this about this person. Male or female. This is someone again who puts words or puts actions behind their words. You know, doesn't promise you the world and then shows you nothing. This is someone who means what they say and says and does what they say. You know, wishes. Can they come true? It certainly looks that way. You know, this is why I don't do short readings, because let's just say we look at all the love cards. Well, that just looks so beautiful, right? It looks so beautiful. Like, here I am about to, you know, enter into the soulmate union, or I have the potential. Here I am about to enter into, like, real abundance. Um, but it's coming from you. It's your wisdom, you know. Um, and it may be something you've always wanted to do, but... For whatever the reason didn't. And again, I could have, we could tie that back to the Seven of Swords energy. They could have certainly told you, you won't be successful. You won't find love again. Well, they knew nothing, right? Their minds are limited. So, you know, if, if we don't look at like, how do we get there? And that is like through the death card, the closing of a door. Even if it's a little difficult, it's so worth it. And this is saying to you, you know, closing of that door, you recoup what you've lost, but tenfold, tenfold. And as it relates to love, this is not someone who's going to have their hands out. This is someone who you're going to be working hand in hand together to really build, well, a true commitment. And it's connected right to you. And divine is saying, I'm bringing it in. You know, it just means you're going to be at the right place at the right time. You don't even have to think about it. Just think about your own vibration. Just think about your own creativity and what you want to do in the world. And divine will take care of the rest. You will just meet at the right time, at the right place. And I have a feeling that these soulmates have a lot of experiences that are very similar. And I'm saying that because of the synchronicities. You know, I have the Ten of Cups twice. That tells me whoever is in this soulmate energy, they also want the Ten of Cups. Who's ever, whoever is this other soulmate of yours, they also want to make a true commitment. They're not interested in just like, you know, I want to date you for a week and then I'm on to the next. You know, maybe they have been that way, but but they've evolved. You know, I feel like that's what the king of Pen or the king of, of cups, who came out twice, by the way. Um, again, this is a king that I feel like really, really, um, what's the word I want to use? Really appreciates love. Doesn't mean they were always perfect in love, but listen, maybe that was their soul's quest. How to raise my vibration as it relates to love. I feel like everybody comes to the table. You know, I want to say financially sound, but you may just be on your way. You may just start seeing the fruits of your labor, but that's maybe all you need. You know, it's like once you start seeing the fruits of your labor, I feel like it just continues to get better and better and better. I feel like it all starts with the fool's energy. The willingness to take that leap of faith. The willingness to put what I cannot control in divine's hands and just take a leap of faith within my own life. Destiny. Listen, if it's destined, it's going to happen. Now, doesn't mean we always accept it. Because again, we have free will. 
And that's kind of what the Seven of Cups is. Do I or don't I? And I definitely feel like, you know, that Seven of Swords is, is the reason why the Seven of Cups is here. Is the reason why I may be uncertain. And listen, the Two of Wands coming over the Two of Cups, I feel like that's another lesson we have to learn. Because sometimes we want to know just right away, is this person going to be my forever person? Listen, sometimes you already, you will know that. But I also feel like, you know, it's about the building of a relationship. And I feel like there's a lot of joy in that. And why do we want to skip it over, right? Like, why do we want to just move directly into that commitment? Let's have fun. Let's date. Let's talk on the phone for hours, right? Let's have that romance. Let's allow all of that to play out. And I feel like, you know, at the end of the day, this is showing that the potential of really having this true commitment. And again, I felt like for someone or maybe more than one, it's like someone's getting down on their knee, potentially um, proposing to someone. Now, are they proposing marriage? For some, probably yes. But let's just say at least commitment. Like, I know that I want to spend the rest of my life with you. I have no doubt. I have no doubt. I don't come to you as a bum. I've been building my own life up as you've been building your life up. And now we're going to combine. And that's what the Ten of Pentacles feels like to me. You know, the Nine of Pentacles is a very independent nature. So it can talk about like, especially with justice there, you being single. But I don't feel like that will be the case very long. I would say instead of having fear, just step into it, just like the fool does. Take that leap of faith. No need to, again, project too far out in the future. Enjoy everything that this ace and destiny wants to bring. Don't expect perfection. But I feel like, listen. You know, you know, I think a Sam and I story, and I know that we're soulmate. Well, I know we're twin flames, but um, that doesn't mean that, like, there's not arguments. There are arguments, but we also, you know, we made that commitment that no matter what type of argument comes out, we're going to work it out. We're going to stick together. And I feel like this is the first time in my life where I've said that to someone. And I'm going to use myself as an example because I feel like my life is probably similar to a lot of your lives. And listen, my life has not been easy. I know that Seven of Swords energy. I know it well. I know the fear of moving forward. I know it well. But I also know that there were doors that I had to close. And by closing those doors, it's really what opened up this new life to me. And I couldn't be more thankful. So, anyway. But by the way, you know, uh, we spent five years. Like, he lived in one state. I lived in another state. We spent five years just talking on the phone. But it was so romantic. And we learned so... I mean, we already knew each other from our childhood. And I know many of you know this story. But, you know, 40 years later, he reaches out. And... um it did take me five years to make that ultimate decision of whether I was going to leave the state I was living in, um, even my family, which was the hardest thing, and move in with him. But ultimately, I made that decision. And, you know, I couldn't imagine us not being together now. I didn't know any of it was going to happen. And that's why I tell you, that 
the more that you just open yourself up to divine energy, the more that you allow yourself to take these leaps of faith, the more you just, you know, put those positive intentions out there, close those doors is what's that that just isn't serving you any longer. And I feel like you already know, like, I, I just feel it. Like, I feel like you already know what doors need to be closed. If, if this is what you want, you know, if you don't want to close the door, like you don't have to close the door. That is your free will. But hello. Okay. Look at this. Queen of Wands on the bottom of the deck. King of Wands. Now the Queen of Wands. Now, I know she's not your sign, but she is you. And I feel like that's perfect. The King and the Queen with the Ten of Cups over it. Both of these people put actions behind their words. Both of these people move according to their passion and desires. You know, um, and kind of love that, like, there's this little flame lit. Has he got a flame? He doesn't, but he's got new growth on his wand. So, like, you're moving towards this flame. Six of Cups underneath that. Some of you may already know this person. You know, it's interesting how I just told you Sam and I's story. Well, this is kind of who we were back in the Six of Cups. You know, um, when I thought about him throughout my life, it was happy memories. It was treasured memories, truly. And, you know, I do have to say, like, there were times in my life when I was going through difficult situations. And when I, like, put my head in a pillow at night, I would think about him. And I would be, and I would think about, I wonder what my life would have been like if we would have stayed together. But now I do understand, like, I wouldn't have created this life, right? And to me, this is such an important part of my life that it makes sense to me that this came first and then love i feel like follow that flame all right but for some reason i feel like i want to take another mother mary card so i'm going to go ahead and do it something is my my intuition is telling me to take another card so i'm going to do it i'm going to follow it just as I'm asking you to follow your intuition. Wow. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Such a hard thing to do. And listen, when forgiveness comes out, I don't feel like it means you need to pick up the phone and call someone and be like, hey, I forgive you for your acts and your actions. This is about forgiving within your own heart. You know, I have dealt with some pretty difficult people as it relates to love. I mean, very, very difficult people. Um, and I never called them and forgave them, but in my heart I have. And, and what that has done for me, it's allowed me not to carry the, the weight of those relationships with me. They're gone. I don't even think about them. Well, hardly. I mean, maybe if I'm talking like in a tarot session, I may. But that's it. I don't feel the pain of it. Nothing. Sometimes it's about forgiving ourselves for what we think that we have done. You know, but I feel like we're the only ones who, who are judging ourselves. Let's read what it says. I am willing to release old resentments so that I may enjoy my life. I am willing to release old resentments so that I may enjoy my life. Forgiveness. Something told me to take it, and I'm glad I did. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Um, I love bringing these major arcanas in the beginning of the reading. I, I don't know why. I, I really don't know why I don't do it more often. Um, but I feel they're so telling. And um, they all, it just, they made so much sense throughout this reading. You know, this is that type of reading where if you don't watch it to the end, um, 
it just may make no sense, you know, if you only watch the first 15 minutes. But, I, you know, those who are still here, I want to thank you. I really want to thank you because it lets me know that you trust within me and you trust within your guides. You know, I feel like, like someone said um, in one of their comments, like, I just get my cup of tea and I just sit back and I just watch. And I love that. So I thank you all. I thank you all for every way you support this channel. You know, I would suggest, which I try not to do too often because I don't like anyone to think that I'm pushing a video upon you, but something is telling me that this reading for a lot of you, and um, I just changed the thumbnail. I forget what the thumbnail says now. Um, oh, that your soulmate is looking for you also. Something like that. But it's literally where I went straight to divine and I asked five questions about soulmate union. Here's the soulmates. Here's the union. So you may want to check it out. It's not as long as this one. All right, guys. Thank you. I love you. Can't wait to read your comments. I know people are going to be in different places. And that's why I love your comments because you really help pull others through. And um, I feel like that's our purpose. You know, as we learn lessons, let's help others to evolve. Let's let them know that there is, you know, more to life than this Seven of Swords energy. You know, even though it's difficult to close these doors, that it's so worth it, that the grass is greener on the other side. So, thank you. I love you. I thank you, and I will see you next time at our table. Happy September. Wow. Bye-bye, guys.